Hi everyone. Today I want to quickly talk to you about how locators actually work. Not just pushing buttons, turn them on, making the functions happen, but how they actually work, how they actually perform. The theory of locating. Now this is going to apply to any locate set that you have out there. I am going to touch on the VLOC3 Pro, which does things a little bit differently, but for the most part, this is all going to be basic theory and it's going to be quick, so stay tuned. Inside the receiver, we have some coils and what they do is they pick up an electromagnetic field. I'll show you that field in a minute, but they pick up that electromagnetic field and they're able to see the peak, which is the top dead center of the field or the null, which is the outer edges. We can put those together with newer technology now and show it to you on screen. But really what it's doing is it's taking a slice of that electromagnetic field and looking at either the outer edges or the top dead center. Now, I want to make sure that you understand the most accurate way to do a locate is to look at the peak. The peak top dead center is what sticks closely to the top center portion of that field of your conductor better than the null does. Now, new technology in our VLOC3 Pro. What we have in here is a set of omnidirectional coils that allows us to see that electromagnetic field in three dimensional, see it in the cylinder that it actually is. How we've done that is taken an air cord coil, combine it with two ferrite coils. We got one at the top, one at the bottom, and that allows us to again, see in 3D, but not only see in 3D directly below us, but see in 3D around the receiver, which gives us those other modes like plan view modes, offset locate, and allows us to have a color code to our bar graph to help with distortion. So, the electromagnetic field. The common myth with utility locators, they don't actually find buried pipes, cables, and wires. A lot of people don't ever tell you that. What we're actually only finding is an electromagnetic field that we put on using our transmitter. We then go and find that electromagnetic field with our receiver. Now, if you look at this image here, you can see that it actually looks more like slices, like individual pieces, than the real cylinder or tube that it is that envelops that whole conductor. So, with our VLOC3 Pro, we can see that actual whole tube. But, Keep in mind, electromagnetic field, if you don't have that, you're not doing a locate. In this illustration here, that's basically what we're showing. The utility in the front with the electromagnetic field on it, you can actually find that with your receiver and be able to do a proper locate. The one behind it has no electromagnetic field on it and is non-locatable. Now, whether you're just not hooked up to that one and you're only hooked up to the first conductor and there's no jumping, ghosting, spilling, bleeding onto that other one, which is perfect, that's what we'd like to see in a perfect world, or that other conductor back there, maybe it's dielectric, which means that there's no way to actually put electromagnetic field on, like a fiber optic cable that has no armor jacket or trace wire run with it, or a plastic pipe that has no trace wire one run with it. We can't locate that because we can't put an electromagnetic field onto it. So a typical locate set, receiver, transmitter, set of leads, ground stake, and a signal clamp. Common stuff that most folks will have in their locate set. So how we actually send out that electromagnetic field? Two major ways. We've got passive, which are radio frequencies, 60 hertz field, which happens to be there because of our power utilities, or in some other areas, 50 hertz field. And we can also find CP120 or CP100, which is a cathodic protection signal that's put onto pipelines as their cathodic protection for corrosion. Not used as often, but these are some of the passive modes that we have. An active way of locating is how we're putting it on with our actual transmitter, either using a signal clamp or induction or direct connection, which is our preferred method. So in this slide, we've got our frequencies. As you can see, we have different sine waves here to the frequencies. So we've got lower frequencies, which move slowly, need good hard grounds and direct connection. We've got medium frequencies, work with direct connection, induction, and our signal clamp. 
High frequencies, same thing, will work with all three, but because those high frequencies jump around a little bit more, it just basically means that there's more chance to jump, ghost, bleed, spill onto other conductors. So we try to stay as low as possible that we'll get the job done. Question honestly comes up, what frequency should I use? Here's the tip. Use the lowest frequency that will get the job done. Start low. If it doesn't seem to work and it jumps around, your signal jumps around on screen, doesn't seem to be sending anything out, you have no milliamps on the transmitter, try the next frequency higher until you get one that is nice and steady and gives you a good signal when you start out doing your sweep. Now, signal clamps. Very important note about signal clamps. You must have a ground ahead and behind the clamp on both sides as this illustration shows. If I go above the ground, I'm not going to get any signal travel or very, very little. So this applies to especially if you've ever opened up a, a transformer and seen inside with primary cables. On that primary cable, there's the concentric neutral or ground that gets peeled off and hooks to the ground. If you hook above that, you're not going to get very much signal travel. Hook below it, it's going to work wonderfully. Same thing goes if you take that signal clamp and go to connect around something, maybe a telecommunications cable, and the ground's been disconnected right there. You're not going to get good signal launch at all. Now, distortion. Distortion is the number one thing that we try to solve as a manufacturer of locate sets. Distortion can cause all kinds of problems, and in null mode, primarily causes us to have bad locates. In peak mode, it can push that peak a little bit, but it's going to be closer over time. So how in the VLOC3 we try to overcome that is with the color codes. Because we can now see in three-dimensional, we try to show you in a color code what that field looks like beneath us. So we show our blue, green, and red bar. Green mean very low distortion, should be a great locate, probably what you're hooked up to. Blue, again, is probably what you're hooked up to, going to be a decent locate. Maybe your peak null is off a little bit and maybe your depth is off a little bit. Red is maybe not even at all what you're hooked up to, not what you want to be locating. High distortion and your peak null and your depth will not work. With traditional locators, how we go out and determine if we've got distortion on the line, we look at things like our peak and null and our depth. If I can put the receiver on the ground, raise it up a foot, and it changes by a foot, then that tells me that that is confirmable and I have low distortion. If I look at where my peak is and look at where my null is, if both of those agree and line up at the same spot, again, I have low distortion. Higher indication that what I'm looking at is what I actually am connected to and what I want to be locating. Now, number one problem that I come across and that has the number one cause of damages is not walking the locate. Hook your transmitter up and start from that connection point and walk to where your locate is supposed to happen. A lot of damages happen because you hook up the transmitter and walk directly to where the locate is supposed to happen and assume that you're going to be able to find what you've connected to. So please make sure, hook up the transmitter, walk out from that connection point to the actual locatable area. I hope this helps you. Please reach out to your local distributor or local rep so that we can come out and do a full on-site training for you to go over this in much more detail. Thanks very much and have a great day.